So as part of our work in Checkpoint Research, um, we aim at finding vulnerabilities in different popular um, uh, ap applications and environments um, and in order to work with the vendors and fix these vulnerabilities before threat actors can use them. So one vulnerability that we recently found was in Zoom. Uh, we were able to, uh, to actually track the, uh, the way that Zoom randomize their, uh, their conference numbers. Um, and generate these numbers ourselves and join um, many different uh, video or uh, just different conferences that, uh, that take place on Zoom. Um, we couldn't really choose which meeting we're gonna join, uh, but we did see some uh, some meetings of some very famous uh, companies, um, and of course we immediately reported it to Zoom. And what uh, what they did uh, is both to to change the way that they uh, that these numbers work, but also um, add mandatory passwords to all meetings so that uh, people can't really use this uh, this vulnerability right now. Um, so the main takeaway for online uh, conference platforms um, is that these companies are in charge of the security of their users and uh, they need to work really well to, to secure these, these environments. Um, so what Zoom did was to add a password, but, um, but other actions can be, can be taken um, as well uh, so that people can't really abuse these, these platforms. So the work that we do uh, and where the threat actors are, that's of course always a cat and mouse game. Um, so we always need to find the new, uh, the new attacks that they're conducting and they need to make sure that we don't find them. Uh, so it's always deploying new technologies from both sides. Uh, and as part of that, it's not just about finding the, the hacks, but also about finding the hackers. So the, the threat actors now understand that we don't only want to stop the attacks but also to find who they are uh, and so they start to uh, to leave smoke screens uh, so that we don't find who they are or that we think that they found that we found who they are uh, but actually we are wrong um, so while we look for artifacts like um, like the language the comments in the code were written in uh, so threat actors from China just might leave uh, leave um, you know comments in uh, Russian so that we get confused so it's always pretty hard for us when we find these clues to understand is it a real is it real evidence that we can use or maybe it's just an artifact uh, left in there to to confuse us um, so it's a matter of understanding the authenticity of these clues uh, and to finding a number of clues all leading to the same direction uh, so that we can really feel uh, feel com um, uh, comfortable with our attribution and uh, not assume that we might be framing someone from some for, for someone else's job so it's really a very uh, thin line there that we need to, to keep So I want to discuss three of the biggest attacks that we're seeing today, uh, which are ransomware, mobile attacks, and attacks on cloud infrastructure. Um, so ransomware uh, are actually becoming less and less popular today, so we see less ransomware attacks, but still the attacks that we do see are becoming more and more aggressive. Um, so these ransomware attacks are kind of, I like to call them boutique attacks. Uh, so they are attacking some very specific organizations that have lots of data and lots of money, uh, which allows the threat actors to ask for ransom as high as millions of dollars. Um, and we see that, that the numbers vary from say a hundred thousand dollars to a few millions uh, so these attacks are becoming um, very significant 
The other type of attack that is very popular today and is becoming more and more popular um, every every month uh, is mobile attacks. So, while in the last few years we've been seeing that there are many uh, adware for mobile, uh, right now the threat actors are getting more sophisticated and whatever malware we see for computers, we now also see for, for mobile devices. Uh, so it means that even ransomware and of course banking trojans and information sealers, all of them uh, now have versions for mobile and these versions are also available on the dark web, meaning that there are more and more threat actors who can actually use them. So these attacks are more severe and more popular. Um, and last but not least, attacks on cloud infrastructure. Uh, so uh, threat actors understand that we as enterprises have started using this te technology but haven't adapted our, um, our security technology to the cloud environments. Uh, so they are using misconfigurations um, to, uh, to actually steal information from, the from cloud environments. These are all the large data breaches that we're seeing today. Um, and these attacks, of course, when they happen, they are catastrophic because all of our data is in, this, uh, is in the cloud.